Shalom, Shalom. It's Joel Sanchez with Crucified Life Ministries, and today we're actually looking at the Torah portion, Meketz, which can be found in Genesis chapter 41 through chapter 44 to verse 17. So let's jump right in. Over the past few weeks, I've actually been sharing about this concept of honor and shame and I know some of it may seem kind of repetitive, but you can actually find this in many of the Torah portions uh, starting from the beginning. So even though I'm going to repeat myself a little bit today, I want to add a, a new element to this uh, as what I've been studying uh, from a guy named Werner uh, Mishka. I'm sorry, Werner Mishke. And uh, he has a, a blog, he has information, he's written a book as well on this concept. But the concept that he coined and he came up with is called Honor Status Reversal. And so he's real big into honor and shame, but today we're going to look at something that actually he, he, uh, he's coined and he's come up with, and it's very interesting. So with that said... Miketz, this portion, is actually dealing with Yosef or Joseph and um, him getting out of prison in Egypt and interpreting Pharaoh's dreams uh, or his dream and being able to go from prison to sitting among princes. Okay, so. We're going to kind of skip all of the dream interpretation and all of that. Not that it's not important. It's very important. But let's get right to uh, what I would like to share. As I believe it was last week, I began to share about Adam and Eve. Okay, they how honor and shame played a part in their lives. Uh, I want to go back and touch on that because it ties into what we're going to see here today. So if you go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, you can see something about honor and shame. Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Let's start in verse 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why were they not ashamed? Well, the reason why they weren't ashamed is because they dwelt, they lived, they were made in the image of Yah, so therefore they were Walking, they were surrounded with the kavod, the glory, as it's translated into English, the glory of God. But I submit to you that that word kavod can also be used to give us the picture of honor. So Adam and Eve were actually clothed, they were surrounded with the honor of Yah. And then, of course, when, when they sinned, um, they realized that they're naked, and then they become, they, they go, they fall from an honorable state to a dishonorable state or a shameful state. And this is why you see them trying to clothe themselves with, uh, with fig leaves. But then Yah comes back and he actually takes garments. And he clothes them with, with the garments that, uh, that he made in order to restore honor, to restore their honor, to cover their shame by restoring their honor. So with that said, we find what I mentioned earlier, uh, the coin or the term that uh, Werner Mischke uh, coined was honor status reversal. So first you see Adam and Eve 
were walking around in an honorable state because they were clothed with the kavod, the honor, the glory of Yahweh. Then you see the fall where sin entered into uh, the, 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 the creation. Then from there, Yahweh comes back and He clothes them. He covers their shame and He restores their honor. So He reverses the status. They go from honor to shameful back to honorable again. So with that said, let's look at this principle in this week's Torah portion in Miketz. So, let's turn to Genesis chapter 41, and let's begin to read in verse 39 through 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as Elohim hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vesters of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. So here we actually can find, if we've been keeping up with, with Joseph and his story, all throughout his story, it's about an honor and shame, uh, honor status reversal, or it's about shame being reversed to honor and then honor being reversed to shame. So what do I mean by that? Well, first, if you remember, Joseph, his father... Jacob takes a robe, a long robe. The translations call it a robe of many colors, but it's actually it can the the Hebrew seems to point to a long robe, which means a robe of the firstborn. Joseph was the firstborn of Rachel, and so we see that this causes problems within the family because there were others who had been born to Leah who were actually older and the firstborn. So these brothers knew that Joseph, even though he was the youngest at that time, um, that he uh, was basically being honored by Jacob because of the robe. And this is why you see the brothers, they strip him of his robe and they throw him in a pit. It's not only to just throw him in a pit, but it's actually to dishonor and to shame him when they removed his robe. Not only Joseph, but also to shame, um, to shame Jacob because Jacob was the one who gave Joseph this, this long robe and this honorable status. So the story goes on, Joseph gets sold into slavery, he goes through several situations, he's actually trying to do, uh, live for Yahweh, do the honorable thing, do what is right, and then he finds himself in jail, and the favor of Yahweh is on him while he's in jail, and then it brings us to this week's portion where Pharaoh has a dream, and the magicians and the sorcerers and, and, and all of Pharaoh's court, they cannot, they're stumped. They cannot uh, interpret this dream. And then the cupbearer um, remembers, uh, 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 you know, who, who Joseph was in prison with. He remembers Joseph and says, hey, there's a guy in prison who I bet can interpret your dream. And so Pharaoh calls for Joseph to come out of uh, the dungeon or, you know, the, 
his uh, imprisonment. And Joseph interprets the dream for Pharaoh. And then in what we read from Genesis chapter 44, verses 39 to 44, we actually see something very interesting dealing with the honor status reversal. Um, and that, that being said, we see Pharaoh actually makes Joseph like the prime minister of, of Egypt. He's right under Pharaoh. Okay, so Joseph is giving honor, is given honor. Then Pharaoh takes his ring off, okay, which is a sign of giving him authority and honoring him. He puts a robe on him of fine linen. And in the ancient Near East, remember I've taught on this before, but robes, their color and how fine they were and how expensive they were defined what status in society you were. It identified your social uh, status or social level, if you will. And so these things were given, a necklace was given to Joseph. All of these things were given to him to bestow honor upon him. So even though the father honored him. We see that honor reversed when his brothers shamed him. Then, from the shaming of his brothers, we see Yahweh use Pharaoh to actually bestow honor upon him again by not only taking him out of prison, but by appointing him to become second in the land right under Pharaoh. So this is very interesting that we see this week um, this honor status, honor shame status reversal, uh, if you will. And I want to end this by bringing this in or maybe sharing like a type and a shadow. We can actually see in the life of Joseph a type and shadow of Yeshua. So Yeshua is actually in the, in the heavens at the right hand of the Father, or He's in the heavens with the Father, an honorable state. He comes down to the earth to take on the form of a man. Then he receives the honor of his father after the, the, uh, the baptism with John the Baptist. Remember, the dove comes and lights on him and Yahweh says, This is my son who I am well pleased. Okay, Yahweh is bestowing honor upon him. And then he teaches the disciples and he goes to the cross. And he dies a dishonorable death on the cross. Because in Rome, in, 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 in that culture, crosses were a method to uh, not only just crucify people and kill people, but it was a method to shame them. It was a method to crush rebellion and to encourage people to not rebel. So Yeshua goes from an honorable stage to a dishonorable stage, a shameful stage, to be able to restore Israel and to restore you and I back to the Father. In other words, He takes on shame in order, or He takes not just the shame of Israel, but He takes your and my shame in order so that He can clothe us, clothe us, clothe, excuse me, us again with honor and in honor. And then when Yeshua resurrected, He no longer is in a shameful state. He returns to an honorable state because the grave could not contain Him. He was resurrected by the power of His Father. And He's sitting at the right hand of His Father. And He is the mediator. He covers us with His honor. And He's the mediator of you and I to the Father. So we clearly see 
that this, this principle of honor status reversal, uh, reversal is very important throughout the Scripture. And it's, it's from Genesis and it's all the way to Revelation. So I would encourage you uh, to begin to get on the internet and look up guys like Werner, uh, Mishki, look up guys like David De Silva, and another guy by the name of Jerome Neary. All of these guys talk about the honor and shame principle or concept as well as patron and client um, system. And if you do that, it's going to, if you study these guys and get their books, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to open your scriptures up and you're going to be able to see the scriptures from a totally different light and it's going to completely make sense. Until next week, Shalom, I'm Joel Sanchez with Crucified Life Ministries. Thank you.